What's up YouTube, what's up YouTube? My name is Smitty and welcome back to my channel. And if you are new here, consider subscribing right down below and becoming part of our squad. So I woke up in the best mood possible, excited, energetic, and I was like, man, I'm gonna go visit some friends. I decided I was gonna go ahead and take you guys along with me. You probably won't see them in this video because they all hate to be filmed. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, I, I actually don't like to be filmed all that much either, but I've gotten used to it. But what I will be doing is taking you around and showing you where I grew up and where I have places that I've lived. Y'all ever heard the term from rags to riches? Or better yet, when Drake came out with a song, started from the bottom. Well, my family 100% started from the bottom. And I'm not really complaining because it's taught me some very invaluable lessons, like the value of friendship and the value of money and how to save, and blah, 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 blah. And being a little older, I am very appreciative of those lessons that I've learned. Also want to give a big shout out to my mom for always keeping her head up and always grinding, always building for a better future for her and me and my sister. So thank you, mom. Hats off to you. But without further ado, let's get to it. You may be asking, why am I at this random park? Well, I'm at this random park because I spent a lot of my childhood here. It's called Deep Creek Locks Park. And when I say I spent a lot of time here, I've spent a lot of time here. Pretty much every birthday in the family, we came here. And it, anytime we wanted any kind of enjoyment, we came here. And if we needed some uh, seafood, bunch of crabs in this water right here. Maybe not right now because it's cold, but we spent a lot of time here at Deep Root Locks. And we didn't do the traditional crabbing. We didn't have a crab pot and we didn't put some meat in the crab pot, lower it down in the water, wait a few minutes and pull it up and have crabs. We went to the store and bought six drumsticks and some fishing line. And then what we did with the drumsticks is we took the fishing line, wrapped it around like six or seven times, tied in a little knot, and then we lowered the meat down into this canal right here. Crabs typically have a lot of bubbles. So wherever the bubbles are, just drop the meat, wait a few seconds, and then you'll feel slight tugs because that's when the crab is starting to eat the meat. And what they do is they grab it with one hand and the other hand, they pull the meat off and eat it. So what you have to do is you have to pull that line up really, really slow or you'd risk losing the crab. We didn't have any nets, nothing like that. So we just slowly, slowly, slowly. And then once we got it up, we grabbed the crab and throw it in the bucket and we were good. So I've definitely had my fair share of crab. But to be honest, it wasn't the worst way to spend a birthday. Like we'd have our party up there under the gazebo and you have this nice view. As you can see, there ain't much to this park, but I'm gonna head out and go to Portsmouth, Virginia. So when I was really young to about four, I, me, my mom and my sister actually lived with my grandmother. And there used to be a bunch of, let me stop right quick and say, I'm sorry for the noise. There is a major highway right here, but there used to be a bunch of houses down here, like a bunch of the big old neighborhood. And it was mainly used for military officer housing in the Navy because we're really close to Norfolk, Virginia. Um, after, after the Navy used it, they decided that they were gonna tear them down, but before they tear them down, they decided to, to offer them for rent for a little while. And then after probably a couple years, they condemned them um, along with the mall. There used to be a mall up here, but they tore it down because of crime. And then no one really shopped there. Now they made a big old shopping center there. They're trying to turn this place around, but I don't ever see this 
ever growing again because it's completely overgrown. Like, look at it. I've tried getting back here a few times to see if there's any remnants of where I used to live, but my car will, will only make it to a certain point and it's coming up like right up there. It's like a bottleneck and I can't get back there. But I decided, I decided why not? Let me just do it on foot and see how far I can get back there. If I don't get shot or murdered back here. It's really crazy to think that there used to be a community back here, but now it's, it's like it never existed. But yeah, I don't think there's nothing back here. All that's left is this little piece of road. And now it's basically just a dump site. I don't know why people do that. I'm gonna get, keep walking down this road and see if I can find anything. But I don't even see all the connecting roads that were back here. <laughs> yeah, there ain't really <laughs> much back here. But this is the junction I was talking about. Where you go right or left. And then up here, it'll be a little a loop around and I live right near the root loop. <laughs> the crazy thing is there was probably 40 to 60 houses back here and my family and two other families were the only white people that lived here. And I think that's probably why I get along with everyone. The one crazy thing about this place is my mom said she only paid like 50 bucks a month rent. and. But that was like 30 years ago. <laughs> so things are a little bit different and especially the community's not even here anymore. I even tried looking this place up on Google, but there's no record of this place at all. Like none, it's gone. I don't know how, <laughs> I don't know why, but they removed the entire record of this place. And the name of this community was called Fairwood Homes or Academy Park, depends on who you ask. And we've lived here and then we moved and then we came back, which because my mom told me it was only $50 a month. <laughs> so that explains why she moved back. After we moved from Fairwood Homes, we moved into this place I'm about to show you. And then after this place, we went right back to Fairwood Home. And this other house called Powell Circle, this is where I was bit by a pit bull when I was like three riding on a big wheel. And then also this is the same house where I took a nail to the head because we were playing camp and we, we found spare wood from around the neighborhood. Some of them had nails, some of them didn't. And when we went into the tent that we made, it collapsed and one of the boards hit me in the head with the nail going straight through my head. Pretty good memory. It's probably why I got a big head. And the main reason why I'm doing this is because I like to reminisce sometimes and I also like to humble myself because these are the places that I've come from and how far that I've came. So always try and build and be better because you never know anything could happen and you could be knocked right back down to the bottom. This kid over here had a trampoline and he never let me jump on it. And another reason why I'm doing this is because to show y'all why I joined the military because I moved around a lot as a kid. I wasn't even a military brat. No one in my family has been in the military but I moved around a lot. And then when I got old enough, I was like, man, the military moves a lot and I liked moving. So, so I just put two and two together and that's not one of the reasons why I joined the military. After we got the whole Fairwood Homes thing 
and we moved to Powell Circle, and then we moved back to Fairwood Homes. We moved into this house right here. I'm gonna walk down the street because I have a lot of fond memories of this place, and I'll show you around. So this is the house that I was raised in from about eight years old to about 12. My best friend lived right here. Her name was Brooke. And then my other best friend was right across the street. His name was Brandon. Like every single house on this street, <laughs> we knew everyone. And I absolutely loved living here. We had a, we had a little pool in the backyard. We had a shed, but I guess they tore it down. It was definitely not yellow when we lived there, it was blue. And this Brooks house was kind of rough and needed work. This house over here was my best friend's family's house. My best friend Steven lived in this house right here. Right here in this yellow house was my best friend's house. I'm still best friends with him to this day. I met him when I was in the second grade. Uh, 89 Sergwain. This is two houses. This is one and this is another one. And then across the street from that was Hakeem, Kareem, Hashim. It was like seven brothers that had Heem at the end. It was, <laughs> it was awesome. And my last good friend, I'm back down the street where I used to live. I used to live in that, that yellow house. My best friend, Edward, who used to live right here, right after I moved, his house burned down and he lost his parents. I don't know what happened to him, but I just saw it on the news and the obituary and the announcement to come pay your respects. Tragic loss, their family was amazing. I was over there pretty much every day because he had video games. <laughs> right down the street from where I just was um, there's another house that we stayed at we've pretty much lived in like 10 different places within a five mile radius five to ten mile radius and it's right here the one cool thing about this little neighborhood uh, minus the crime rate um, the schools like the middle school and the elementary school were probably about a mile apart and I could walk to school. Well, not the elementary school. My mom wouldn't let me walk to elementary school. I could only walk to middle school. But I did one year in middle school. And then I moved to North Carolina. And I'm heading there now. So finally made it to North Carolina, just made that hour drive from Virginia to North Carolina to show you the next house that I've lived in. This last house that I'm gonna show you is one of the houses before I joined the military. <laughs> so why are you looking at a strawberry farm? Well, the strawberry farm, it's a big childhood memory. This strawberry farm works on the honor system. You either go and pick your own strawberries and then there's a money box usually sitting on these white pallets right here and then you put the money in how many strawberries that you bought. Sometimes they had pre-made baskets already sitting there, but most of the time you just go pick your own and drop your money in. But the local kids <laughs> used to run through the fields and just eat as many strawberries as we could at, late at night. I'm pretty sure the owners knew that we did that, but <laughs> I've eaten tons and tons of strawberries. I still love them to this day because of this strawberry farm. But let me show you the house. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it because there's a utility man right there, but that is the house that I used to live in. I moved there when I was about 12 years old, maybe 11, I don't remember. It was the beginning of, in the middle of the sixth grade. And the funny thing about that house is everyone on the bus, they would think we were rich because it is a big house, 
but people didn't know that we were house poor. And what that means is all of my parents' money went to the rent or the mortgage. Uh, so the food was scarce. <laughs> That's probably why I stole a lot of strawberries. But when I moved here, um, it was 100% different because I was from the city and people kept to themselves. When I moved here, everyone wanted to know you. Everyone was in everybody's business because it was a small town. There's more cows in this town than people. I think that's how I became very likable because I can be friends with anyone from the city, from the country, hillbillies, anything I'm friends with. But I did run into a lot of trouble at this house because I used to steal my parents' car to drive to school. Don't do that. I, that started when I was about 15, 16. I didn't have a license yet. I just stole it and then drove because my mom used to work an hour and a half in Virginia. So she was hardly ever around. And we had a Bronco that was always needing repair. So I would just take it, drive to school and come back. That's why I mentioned earlier that it was nice that I could walk to school. It took 45 minutes just driving to school. You drive 45 minutes that way. It, it's only a two lane highway all through the town. I had to take the bus if I didn't steal the car and it took about an hour and a half to get to school. So I, school started at eight and I would be on the bus at five because it was ridiculous. And then when I turned 18, things kind of took a sideway turn. I got in a little bit more trouble. I got expelled from school when I got arrested. And that was the point in my life where I was like, I gotta make a change. And I decided to join the military, but I couldn't join the military because I dropped out of school. So I went to the local community college and I took my high school classes. No, I did not take the GED. I got my high school diploma because I went to the local college, took my courses that I needed to complete to graduate. And I graduated and I joined the military and then the rest is history. But yeah, that's my life summarized into a 10-15 minute video. That's all I got. I'll catch you on the next one.